Okay, everybody, we've got ourselves a little bit of an action-packed Friday, and I could not let the day finish without taking a look at the official terms of the Geno Smith contract extension. We now have it. It took a little bit longer than I was hoping. Uh, I was Obviously, you want to get these deets as soon as possible when they come out, but better late than never, and it's mostly good news. This is a very agreeable contract structure. So I'm over here on overthecap.com. Uh, this has been tweeted about by a few different people as well. So it seems to be relatively official here. This is the breakout of the Geno Smith contract extension. And again, it really illustrates the, the break, the massive break that Geno Smith has given this team. He didn't have to do this. He absolutely did not have to do this, and I can't think of very many other players that would do this, especially quarterbacks. Occasionally, you might see an older guy at another position say, yeah, you know what, I'm not going to try to squeeze every dollar out. Gino left a lot of dollars out there. He did. And not only did he relinquish a lot of potential guaranteed money here, he relinquished a lot of potential money and he relinquished a lot of long-term security. So what do I mean by that? Let, let's break this down. So it is a three-year, $75 million deal, which we already knew. There are escalators in the contract for $15 million a year in 24 and 25 that he can reach if he performs well in 2023 and 2024, which those are the escalators I talked about in a video I made yesterday. Those still apply, but for the moment... They don't exist on this contract. They exist once he reaches those markers, which was like 4,300 yards, 30 touchdowns, making the playoffs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So with that out of the way for the moment, because until he reaches those markers, there's no point talking about them. And if he does reach them, we'll probably be happy to have him at a higher cost because he'll be killing it. So 2023, the cap number is a mere 10.1 million. $10.1 million cap hit for Geno Smith in 2023. And notice, by the way, one thing I want to point out here is we accomplished this with no void years. There are no void years reported on this contract. There's no dead money in 26, 27, 28, nothing. And yeah, you could have gotten this number a little bit lower if you had decided to do that, but you have gotten it pretty darn low without needing to do that. Think about it like this. The savings from releasing Shelby Harris plus Ben Burkirvin equal the cap hit for Geno in this first year. So at $10 million plus the savings that we're generating from releasing guys plus the money we had anyway plus the money we can create with some restructuring which you're starting to see teams do all across the league you're going to have enough money to spend for sure. You're going to have enough money to make this team a lot better in the coming couple of months. So, great news there. Nothing bad to say about that. So, 2024. Let's talk about 2024 here for a little bit. He has a much bigger cap hit of $31.2 million. $31.2 million. Now, $9.6 million of it is in a roster bonus that he only acquires if he's still on the roster on March 20th of 2024. So therefore, this part of the bonus voids if he's released before then. So that means that if he maybe doesn't have a very good season and the team decides let's move in a different direction, um, it, I mean, it would be disingenuous to say this is just a one-year deal, but that is a big chunk of the bonus that does not apply if he is released before March 20th of next year. So you're going to have plenty of time to make that decision. You're going to have plenty of opportunities to judge his value and you save a lot of money if you decide he's not worth the squeeze. Now, if you release him after next season, this upcoming season, which is possible, I do want to discuss this for a moment here, because some people are calling this basically a one-year deal. And the reason why they're saying that is because releasing him next year creates a dead cap hit of $17.5 million, which is big. You don't want to do that if you don't have to. But you do free up nearly $14 million. So if Gino's not playing very well and you decide you want to go in a different direction, 
you would probably do that. You would probably say, yeah, the dead money hit is unfortunate, but we can live with it, and we're saving $14 million on a guy that we have decided we don't want anymore, which is very possible. So if you release him before March 20th of next year, you're saving about $14 million. It is possible. I think more likely, however, is a release before the 2025 season, where he has the same arrangement. His roster bonus of $10 million doesn't kick in until March 20th of 2025, meaning that you can release him before then and that bonus goes away. Now, his cap hit for 2025 is actually not bad either. It's 33.7, which, by the way, is actually a lower percentage of the cap than it is in 2024. But to release him, you're only on the hook for the prorated bonus of 87 so you're saving 25. So it becomes a lot more feasible, a lot more realistic, and easy to swallow at that point. However, if Gino's playing well, and even if he's playing so well he qualifies for his roster bo- uh, expanded roster bonus, the cap hit is not bad. 2024, the cap is going to be pretty high. It's going to go up. It maybe goes up a lot, by the way. The cap could skyrocket in... 2024 because of the Amazon Prime money, because of the uh, Sunday ticket money. That's it, it could go up more than we're currently thinking. $31.2 million for a franchise-level quarterback or even a slightly below franchise quarterback is really, really agreeable. It, like um, Over the Cap says here, it's only 12.2% of the cap. It couldn't end up being even lower easily. And then the next year, yeah, it's a tiny bit more money, but if he's still playing well, 12% of the cap... That's perfectly agreeable. And again, it could end up being like 10 or 11% because the cap, we don't know what the cap is going to do. Now, again, I do want to reiterate one thing here. These numbers, these cap hits will go up a lot if he qualifies for his roster, for his bonuses, his escalators. Uh, In fact, this cap hit number could go all the way up to 46 million if he meets all of his incentives or escalators, and this number could go up to about $49 million if he meets all of his incentives. Now, at that point, you're probably okay with it because he's playing really, really well at that point, unless he's doing the Jameis Winston thing where he's throwing for a ton of yards and touchdowns and just throwing a ton of interceptions too, but probably not. (laughs) That doesn't seem very likely to me. That was a a once-in-a-generation type uh, occurrence with uh, Jameis Winston. However, the escalators are part of the roster bonus meaning they only apply if you keep him. They do not become part of his guarantees. So he could, in theory, achieve all of his escalators in 2023 and then be released before March 20th of 2024, and none of those escalators apply because they're part of the roster bonus. That's how I understand this. So he could actually play really well, and you would still maintain pretty good flexibility. Now, again, if he reaches those escalators... Most of them, or all of them, I imagine you're pretty happy to keep them around. Again, go look at what other quarterbacks are costing these days. $31.2 million for a really good starting quarterback, bordering on great, is no problem. And even less so than following year when the cap hit barely goes up. It goes up by less than the cap is going to go up, percentage-wise. So, yeah, it's a great contract. The The main focus right now should be the cap hit for 2023. It's $10 million, 10.1 perfectly good, not even 5% of the cap. We have several players on the team who have bigger cap hits than that. So if if you weren't happy before, well, maybe nothing will make you happy, but may, maybe this will. Maybe this is enough. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks.